This morning, I felt really called to listen to this woman's near-death experience. And what a beautiful reminder. So she had clinically died. She'd gone into anaphylactic shock. And when she clinically died, she went into this void. Before she did, she saw what was happening in the hospital room. She actually, by look, or I don't know how to say this, she um, found herself in her sister's car, not knowing what was happening seeing her sister all disheveled and concerned and she had no idea what was going on. Um, and then she found herself in this darkness. And in that darkness, she said it felt like 10 years that the time was not like it is here, you know, where we can expect it to feel a certain way. That time was pretty much non-existent, but it felt like eternity. And she was all alone in this darkness. And then she realized that that darkness felt like something that she had created in her own life. That after a divorce, she had isolated herself. And she was at home with her kids, she would go to work and do what she needed to do, take care of her kids, but she isolated herself from the world. And when she was in this darkness, she felt the exact same experience of feeling isolated. And she had this awareness that that quality of energy was the same. And then she realized that she needed to work on finding herself again because she had not only created a wall of isolation from the world but she had created a wall of isolation from herself and from spirit so once she realized as she looked at how she could come back into her spirit how she could come back into her heart and when she did when she started to feel into taking responsibility for what she had created and feeling into her heart again and feeling um, into that self-responsibility for her situation she said it was like shards of glass started going off in all these different directions and she said, then this incredible, beautiful, radiant angel appeared in front of her with this red flowing hair and began to speak to her telepathically, not through the voice, but telepathically and reminded her to focus on bringing that awareness into every cell of her body and to bring calm into every cell of her body and she felt all this unconditional love and she realized that this woman this angel is actually her grandmother she knew at this point when she was filled with all this unconditional love she was shown that she had a choice to come back to earth or to stay there and it was really really hard for her to come back but she knew it was the right thing to do because there was so much love. But before she came back, she said what she experienced as God, this rumbling, really intense, loud energy. Um, and she knew that it was God because there was so much unconditional love in that field as well. And all God said was, I am. I am, and that was telepathically too. 
Hi, Janelle. <laughs> I see that you're here. Speaking of one who's had a near-death experience. <laughs> and when she felt this, the presence, the power in the presence of God, God took her through all these positive things that she had done in her life that made all the difference. And it wasn't the things that she thought that were outrageously positive that she had done. It was the really simple things like paying for this woman's food in line who had forgotten her money. And God showed her another vision of this, this woman who was helping others and packing these baskets of food to help others. And then she was shown negative, um, the negativity that she had created in her life. And again, it wasn't like the things that she thought were the worst things that she had done in her life. And she said it was almost as if she had already suffered enough for those things. She already had a lot of awareness over the things that she had done that had a negative influence. But things that she wasn't aware of that were negative that she had created. And that number one thing was thinking negatively about others her thoughts about others, her judgments. And what she shared is the people that came to mind that most of them, she felt like they had done horrible, horrible things to her, like her husband, right? And yet she was shown that the judgments that she held towards her husband and other people in her life, even if she felt righteous, in those judgments were not only negative, but they were harming her and they were actually harming the other as well. And this is something that resonated so deeply with me, so deeply with me because I've had this awareness that every time I have a thought that's negative about somebody else, even if I feel justified in that negative thought, that when I'm thinking a negative thought about somebody else, it holds them in a pattern. It holds them in that negativity. It's hard for them to find their way out of that. And I can see it and I can feel it. Does that make sense? Can you feel into that? Because when we judge somebody else, and I'm going to take an extreme here, when we judge somebody like Putin, who is making horrible, horrific choices filled with terror that's causing so much harm unto others, when we think negative thoughts about him as evil, if we see him as evil or anyone else as evil, including Hitler, including Stalin, what we are doing is we are holding them, we're crystallizing them in that thought form. And I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but when we think something about somebody else that's negative, it's like they consistently tend to show up that way in our lives. So this woman so beautifully articulated this from another angle, but it again really was so um, affirming of what feels so true because I've seen it within my own life when I hold others that way. And I've seen when I seek to see the highest within them and seek to see that they're shifting into the highest, that highest version of themselves, that I believe that that's happening. I see miracles. I invite you beloveds, 
to hold with me this powerful way of, of seeing and believing in the highest and others on this planet. For the ascension of the planet, for the ascension of all beings, it is up to us to create heaven on earth. There's nobody else that we can count on to do that. No one, no one, <laughs> it's, it's up to us. <laughs> and that's the work that we must commit ourselves to do every single day of our lives, not only for ourselves and for those others, but for our children and our children's children, for the future of this world and to create the heaven on earth that we have been seeking. It happens with us. I am so grateful to be here together because I know that, that if you are here, that you are one of those powerful change makers, that you are doing the work, that you are showing up and saying yes to growing because all that we need to do is say yes to growth, to say yes to life and to continue to make choices that affirm life and affirm growth And Janelle, I saw your comment earlier about how you um, how you choose to see it as a, I think you said a near what did you call it a near life experience, not a a death experience. Yeah, near life experience, a taste of infinite more of divine love through divine oneness. And I affirm that I affirm that for you. And I also have an incredible um, relationship with death as death is a great transformer and we're always dying in every moment as we are also living in every moment. What is dying within us? What wants to die within us? What limiting beliefs and patterns and ideas that no longer serve are dying, are letting go are releasing, are becoming that beautiful compost for the earth so that it can grow and thrive. And that incredible compost within ourselves so that our spirit can grow and thrive and align with our soul, with our soul mission and the soul of the collective, the collective soul. So thank you, beloveds, for being here today. I love, love, love you all so much.